Hey everyone, Amin here with AI Plays. In this series, we will cover the basics of computer vision by studying how a camera works as it converts visible light into a digital image. Let's get started. This is a cross section of a camera. When you press the button to take a picture, the shutter will very quickly open and close, allowing for a small amount of light to pass through. The light passes through various lenses to focus it onto a sensor called a CMOS sensor. The area on the CMOS sensor where light hits is called the pixel array. As the name suggests, it's a huge array of pixels, often over 4096 by 4096. The image on the left shows the structure of a pixel. When light strikes each individual pixel, it is again focused by the micro lens. It then passes through a color filter and finally strikes a photodiode. For now, let's focus on the photodiode. Inside the photodiode, a process known as the photoelectric effect occurs. To understand the photoelectric effect, we first need to look at the structure of light. Light is really the flow of photons. And you can think of a photon as a tiny little water balloon of energy. When light hits objects, some of these little water balloons of energy pop, and the electrons of the object that were hit with the photon gain the energy stored in the photon. The photoelectric effect states that when enough photons, or photons of high enough energy, strike an electron, the electron will gain enough energy to escape, as shown by the image on the right. In the case of our photodiode, when an electron escapes, it enters the potential well. Many electrons build up in this potential well, allowing for a buildup of charge. This charge creates a voltage, which can be read by the CMOS sensor as a numerical value. The system also resets itself automatically. Once a picture has been taken, the camera shutter closes. Now, no more light is entering the pixels. The electrons are not getting any more energy, and the electrons in the potential well lose their energy and return to the photodiode, allowing for another picture to be taken. Now let's move on to the color filter. All the color filter does is restrict what color light can reach the photodiode. For example, since there is a red color filter in this pixel on screen, only red light photons would reach the photodiodes, while all other colors would be reflected. Why does this matter? It's important to note that the CMOS sensor can only read numerical voltage values from each pixel, meaning the output of the CMOS sensor is going to be a black and white image. By restricting what kind of light can pass through at specific points, the CMOS sensor is able to get color information even in a black and white image. The pixel array is made of a checkerboard pattern of green, blue, and red pixels. This is for two main reasons. First, the human eye works very similarly and also has receptors for these three colors. Second, combinations of these three colors can create almost the entire color spectrum. That is to say, these three colors create a color gamut. The checkerboard pattern of the CMOS sensor comes in four different types. RGGB, GRBG, BGGR, and GBRG. Notice that each of these patterns are just 90 degree rotations of each other. Also notice that with all of these patterns, 50% of the pixels are green, 25% are red, and 25% are blue. This is because the human eye sees green better than any other color. The image this creates is a black and white image called a Bayer image, which is then passed on to an image signal processing pipeline. So what is an image signal processing pipeline? It's a series of filters and transformations applied to a Bayer domain image that transforms the black and white picture generated from the light sensing photodiodes and the pixels of the CMOS sensor into a crisp and clear color image. The flowchart on screen gives an overview of the steps involved in an ISP pipeline. In this series, I'll be explaining what is going on at each step, why it's important, and how to perform the step in code using Python. By the end of the series, you should be able to create your own image signal processing pipeline.